you can't stop fentanyl. I mean, you just can't. That mother is using her son's death to try to save others from fentanyl overdoses. Maybe you've seen it. She has a billboard up near the downtown loop in Kansas City. Sarah Manser spent $1,200 to put that billboard up. It bears a photo of her late son who died from an accidental overdose of fentanyl in September of 2020. And her case is not one of its own. The CDC's labeled the rapid rise in deaths from fentanyl overdoses as a national epidemic. September is National Recovery Month. So joining us today, Dr. Doug Burgess. He is an addiction medicine specialist at University Health. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thanks. I'm glad to be here. I think there, there's a lot of misunderstanding. Has the, has the stigma around substance abuse and addiction lessened over the years? It is a disease. I, yeah, I, I, in my practice, I have definitely seen some decrease in stigma. It still remains probably the biggest barrier that people face in asking for help and talking about it. Um, but definitely people are talking about it more. And I think um, as people talk about it more, they realize that it isn't something that needs to be a secret. And it's, real, it's something that impacts everyone. And you had some really, we were talking in the commercial break, some very hopeful statistics. More people are living in recovery than in addiction? Yeah, I think when people find out what I do, I'm an addiction psychiatrist, they say that must be hard. Um, but the reality is the majority of people do find recovery. Uh, recent studies showed 75% of people ultimately achieve recovery. And there's more people in the United States that live with uh, live in recovery than have addiction. I think people uh, oftentimes are afraid to talk about it because of that stigma issue. And it, sometimes it takes more than the first attempt yeah. to find the right treatment. Yeah, so again, statistics show that on average, it can take up to five attempts, uh, but the mean is actually two. So that means for most people, one or two attempts. And, okay. and what I always tell people is, even if it does take multiple, effect, uh, multiple attempts, you're not starting over from where you started. You really take those lessons you've learned each time you attempt recover, treatment, uh, and you can apply those going forward. We've been hearing a lot of scary stories about fentanyl lady, lately. How big of a problem is fentanyl in the metro? It's, it's really massive. If you look at statistics from across the state, Kansas City actually leads the state in terms of percentage increase in overdose deaths. Um, we've seen around a 40% increase, um, and that's pretty consistent. Uh, if you look at areas north and St. Joe, they're all seeing really rapid increases in overdose. Um, it's, it's, uh, it, it's really a huge problem. The rainbow fentanyl that looks like candy. What mm -hmm. do parents need to be watching for? What do they need to understand about this? Yeah, so two things I would say about that. The first thing is that it's relatively new. Um, there's some fears out there that, uh, you know, that people are actively using this to market towards children. It doesn't seem like that's really the case. It seems like the colors of the fentanyl actually are used to, for um, people to, to kind of uh, in a way marketed, I guess, or know kind of the differences between different strain, uh, different types of fentanyl. Um, but there is some, f um, there, there is obviously, uh, we're seeing increases among children uh, getting exposed to fentanyl and among adolescents. So it is something that we need to be vigilant of. But I don't think that people are actively marketing towards kids with, with those colors. As a parent, what do I watch for? I mean, what are the signs of an overdose or that my kid's using? Well, so signs of uh, using would be um, being more withdrawn. If you see big personality changes, um, missing school, changes in grades, just any behavior changes, things like that. Um, the signs of an overdose are um, basically people stop breathing. So their lips may turn blue. You might not be able to wake them up. Um, they uh, can also um, uh, sound like they're snoring, kind of gasping for breath. Those are some of the main symptoms we see of overdose. Dr. Doug Burgess, a psychiatrist with University Health, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks.